now we are going to start with part 2 of the lecture that is the host based intrusion detection system host based ids or hids add a specialized layer of security software to vulnerable or sensitive system such as database servers and administrative systems the heads monitors activity on the system in a variety of ways to detect suspicious behavior in some cases an ids can halt an attack before any damage is done but its main purpose is to detect intrusions log suspicious events and send alerts the primary benefit of a hids is that it can detect both external and internal intrusions something that is not possible either with the network based ids or firewalls as we discussed in the previous section host based IDSs can use either anomaly or signature and heuristic approaches to detect unauthorized behavior on the monitored host. We now review some common data sources and sensors used in HIDS. Continue with our discussion of how the anomaly, signature and heuristic approaches are used in host based ids then consider distributed hids fundamental component of intrusion detection is the sensor that collects data some record of ongoing activity by users must be provided as input to the analysis component of ids common data sources include system call traces audit log file records file integrity checksums and registry access the sensor gathers data from the chosen source filters the gathered data to remove any unwanted information and to and to standardize the information format and forwards the result to the ids analyzer which may be local or remote the majority of the work on anomaly based host based uh, intrusion detection system has been done on the unix and linux systems given the ease of gathering suitable data for this work while some earlier work used audit or accounting records the majority is based on system call traces system calls are the means by which programs access core kernel functions providing a wide range of interactions with the low level operating system functions hence they provide detailed information on process activity that can be used to classify it as normal or anomalous lists of the system calls used in current ubuntu linux system is shown below on this slide as an example this data is typically gathered using an os hook such as the basic security module or the audit module most modern operating systems have highly reliable options for collecting this type of information the system call traces are then analyzed by a suitable decision engine the sequence time delay embedding algorithm is based on artificial immune system approaches 
that compares observed sequences of system calls with sequences from the training phase to obtain a mismatch ratio that determines whether the sequence is normal or not. Later work has been used alternatives such as hidden Markov models HMM, artificial neural networks ANN, support vector machines SVM or extreme learning machines ELM to make this classification. It has been noted in research that these approaches are providing reasonable intruder, intru, intruder detection rates of 95 to 99 percent while having the false positive rates of less than 5 percent, though on older test datasets. These results using recent contemporary data and example attacks with an extensive feature extraction, extraction process from the system called traces and an ELM decision engine capable of very high detection rate while maintaining reasonable false positive rates. This approach should lead to even more effective production HIDS products in the near future. A paper on uh, host-based IDS system with system calls, a review, review paper is available on this link. Go through this paper to understand and assimilate the latest trends in HIDS with system calls. Windows systems have traditionally not used a normally based HIDS as the wide usage of dynamic link libraries DLLs as an intermediary between the process requests for operating system functions and the actual system call interface has hindered the effective use of system call traces to classify process behavior. Some work was done using either audit log entries or registry file updates as a data source, but neither approach was very successful. While using system call traces provides arguably the richest information source for a HIDS, it does impose a moderate load on the monitored system to gather and classify this data. And as we noted earlier, the training phase for many of the decision engine requires very significant time and computational resources. Hence, others have trialed approaches based on audit log records. However, these both have a lower detection rate than the system call trace approaches and are more susceptible to intruder manipulation. The alternative of a signature or heuristic based HIDS is widely used, particularly as seen in antivirus, more correctly viewed as anti-malware products. These are very commonly used on client systems and increasingly on mobile devices and also incorporated into mail and web application proxies on firewalls and in network-based IDSs. They use either a database of file signatures, which are patterns of data found in known malicious software or heuristic rules that characterize known malicious behavior. These products are quite efficient at detecting known malware. However, they are not capable of detecting zero-day attacks that do not correspond to the known signatures or heuristic rules. They are widely used particularly on Windows systems which continue to be, the, to be targeted by intruders. Traditionally, 
work on host based ideas focused on single system stand alone facilities a more uh, effective defense of distributed collection of hosts supported by a lan or internet work can be achieved by coordination and cooperation amongst ideas across the network a good example of distributed ideas is one developed at the university of california at davis the scheme is designed to independent of any operating system or system auditing implementation figure here in this slide shows the overall architecture which consists of three main components host agent module it is an audit collection module operating as a background process on a monitored system its purpose is to collect data on security related events on the host and transmitted transmit these to the central manager lan monitor agent module it operates in the same fashion as the host agent module except that it analyzes lan traffic and reports the results to the central manager central manager module receives reports from lan monitor and host agents and processes and correlates these reports to detect intrusion the architecture depicted in this figure is quite general and flexible it offers a foundation for a machine independent approach that can expand from stand alone intrusion detection to a system that is able to correlate activity from a number of sites and networks to detect suspicious activity that would otherwise remain undetected now coming on to the network based uh, ideas that is nids a network based ids that is nids monitors traffic at selected points on a network or interconnected set of networks the nids examines the traffic packet by packet in real time or close to real time to attempt to detect intrusion patterns the nids may examine network transport and application level protocol activity note the contrast with the host based ids a nids examine traffic packet traffic directed toward potentially vulnerable computer systems on a network a host based system examines user and software activity on a host a typical nids facility includes a number of sensors to monitor packet traffic one or more servers for nids management functions and one or more management consoles for the human interface the analysis of traffic patterns to detect intrusions may be done at the sensor at the management server or some combination of two sensors can be deployed in one of two modes inline and passive an inline sensor is inserted into a network segment so that traffic that is that it is monitoring must pass through the sensor possibly by combining nids sensor logic with another network device for example firewall or lan switch a passive sensor monitors a copy of network traffic the actual traffic does not pass through the device from the point of view of traffic flow the passive sensor is more efficient than the inline sensor because it does not add to extra handling step that contributes to the packet delay the sensor connects to the network transmission medium by a direct physical tap that provides the sensor with a copy of all network traffic the network interface card or nic for this tap usually does not have an ip address all traffic into this nic 
is simply collected with no protocol interaction with the network. The sensor has a second neck that connects to the network with an IP address and enables the sensor to communicate with a NIDS management server. With a single site, a key decision for the security administrator is the placement of sensors. The figure in this slide illustrates a number of possibilities. In general terms, this configuration is typical of larger organizations. All internet traffic passes through an external firewall that protects the entire facility. Internal firewalls may also be used to provide more specific protection to certain parts of network. A common location for a NIDS sensor is just inside the external firewall that is location 1 in this figure, where it can attack originating from the outside world. Instead of placing a NIDS sensor inside the external firewall, the security administrator may choose to place a NIDS sensor between the external firewall and the internet or WAN that is location 2. In this position, the sensor can monitor all network traffic unfiltered. A sensor at location 2 has a higher processing burden than any sensor located elsewhere on the site network. In addition to a sensor at the boundary of the network on either side of the external firewall, the administrator may configure a firewall and one or more sensors to protect major backbone networks such as those that support internal servers and database resources that is location 3. Thus a sensor at location 3 is able to monitor for both internal and external attacks because the sensor monitors traffic to only a subset of devices at the site. It can be tuned to specific protocols and attack types reducing the processing burden. Finally, the network facilities at a site may include separate LANs that support user workstations and servers specific to single department. The administrator could configure a firewall and NIDS sensor to provide additional protection for all of these networks or target the protection to critical subsystems such as personnel and financial networks that is location 4. As with a sensor at location 3, a sensor at location 4 can be tuned to specific protocols and attack types, reducing the processing burden. As with the host based intrusion detection, network based intrusion detection makes use of signature detection and anomaly detection. Some examples suitable for signature detection include application layer reconnaissance and attacks. It analyzes several dozen application protocols looking for attack patterns identified as targeting these protocols. Transport layer reconnaissance and attacks. These analyze TCP, UDP, and other transport layer protocols for unusual packet fragmentation, port scans, TCP specific attacks, etc. Network layer reconnaissance and attacks. This is typical, typically analyzed IP version 4, ICMP, and IGMP for spoofed IP addresses, illegal IP header values, and etc. Unexpected application services, these are used to determine if activity consistent with protocol. 
policy violations such as use of inappropriate websites, use forbidden protocols, etc. Some examples of types of attacks suitable for anomaly detection are denial of service attacks. This involves either significantly increased packet traffic or significantly increased connection attempts to overwhelm the target system. The next is scanning. It occurs when an attacker probes a target network or system by sending different kinds of packets to learn many of the system's characteristics and vulnerabilities. Next is worms detected because of use of large amounts of bandwidth or because they can cause hosts to communicate with other hosts or ports not typically seen. When a sensor detects a potential violation, it sends an alert and logs information related to the event. The NIDS analysis module uses this to refine intrusion detection parameters and algorithms and by the security admin to design prevention techniques. In recent years, the concept of communicate, communicating IDSLs has evolved to schemes that involve distributed systems that cooperate to identify intrusions and to adapt to changing attack profiles. Two key problems have always confronted systems such as IDSs, firewalls, virus and worm detectors. First, these tools may not recognize new threats or radical modifications of existing threats. And second, it is difficult to update schemes rapidly enough to deal with rapidly spreading attacks. Attackers have exploited these problems. A way to counter such attacks is to develop cooperated systems that can recognize attacks based on more subtle clues and then adapt quickly. In this approach, anomaly detectors at local nodes look for evidence of unusual activity. The local node then uses a peer-to-peer -peer gossip protocols to inform other machines of its suspicion in the form of a probability that the network is under attack. If a machine receives enough of these messages so that a threshold is exceeded, the machine assumes an attack is underway and responds. The machine may respond locally to defend itself and also send an alert to a central system. An example of this approach is a scheme developed by Intel and referred as Autonomic Enterprise Security. It is shown in this figure on this slide. In this approach, each end host and network device is a potential sensor and may have the sensor software module installed. The sensors can exchange information to corroborate the state of network, that is, whether an attack is underway. A central system is configured with a default set of security policies based on input from distributed sensors. These policies are adapted and specific actions are communicated to the various platforms in the distributed system. The device specific policies may include immediate actions to take or parameter settings to be adjusted. The central system also communicates policies to platforms that adjust the timing content of collaborative gossip messages. To facilitate the development of uh, distributed IDSs, that can function across a wide range of platforms and environments, standards are needed to support interoperability. Such standards are the focus of the IETF Intrusion Detection Working Group. 
figure in this slide illustrates the key elements of the model on which the intrusion detection messages message exchange approach is based this model does not correspond to any particular product or implementation but its functional components are the key elements of any ideas the specification defines formats for event and alter messages message types exchange protocols for communication of intrusion detection information the functional components are data source that is raw data and ids uses to detect unauthorized or undesired activity the sensor collects data from the data source and forwards events to the analyzer analyzer process analyzing data collected from unauthorized undesired activity administrator is human with overall responsibility for setting security policy uh, of organization the manager process from which operator manages uh, components of id system and the operator is also a human that is primary user of the ids manager the sensor monitors data sources looking for suspicious activity the sensor communicates suspicious activity to analyzer as an event if the analyzer determines that the event is of interest it sends an alert to the manager component the manager component issues a notification to the human operator a response can be initiated automatically by the manager component or by the human operator the security policy is the predefined formally documented statement that defines what activities are allowed to take place now coming on to the honey pots the relative recent innovation in intrusion detection technology is the honey pot honey pots are decoy systems that are designed to lure a potential attacker away from the critical systems honey pots are designed to divert an attacker from accessing critical systems collect information about the attacker's activity and to encourage the attack to stay on system long enough for administration to respond these systems are filled with fabricated information designed to appear valuable but that a legitimate user of the system would not access thus any thus any access to the honey pot is suspect the system is instrumented with sensitive monitors and event loggers that detect these accesses and collect information about the attackers activities because any attack against the honey pot is made to seem successful administrators have time to mobilize and log and track the attacker without ever exposing productive systems initial efforts involved a single honey pot computer with ip address designed to attract hackers more recent research has focused on building entire honey pot networks that emulate an enterprise possibly with actual or simulated traffic and data once hackers are within the network administrators can observe their behavior in detail and figure out defenses honey pots can be deployed in variety of locations as shown in this figure the location depends on a number of factors such as the type of information the organization is interested in gathering and the level of risk that organization can tolerate to obtain the maximum amount of data a honey pot outside the external firewall that is location 1 is useful for tracking attempts to connect to unused ip addresses within the scope of the network a honey pot at this location does not increase the risk for the internal network the disadvantages of an external honey pot is that it has little or no ability 
to trap internal attackers, especially if the external firewall filters traffic in both directions. The demilitarized zone is another candidate for locating a honeypot that is location 2. The security administrator must assure that the other system in the DMZ are secure against any activity generated by the honeypot. A disadvantage of this location is that a typical DMZ is not fully accessible and the firewall typically blocks traffic to the DMZ, the attempts to access unneeded services. Thus, the firewall either has to open up the traffic beyond that is permissible, which is risky, or limit the effectiveness of the honeypot. A fully internal honeypot that is at location 2, at the location 3, has several advantages that it can catch internal attacks and can also detect a misconfigured firewall that forwards impermissible traffic from the internet to the internal network. There are several disadvantages. The most serious of these is if the honeypot is compromised so that it can attack other internal systems, any further traffic from the internet to the attacker is not blocked by the firewall because it is regarded as a traffic to the honeypot only. Another uh, difficult for this honeypot location is with location 2, the firewall must adjust its filtering to allow traffic to the honeypot, complicating firewall configuration and potentially compromising the internal network. Now coming on to Snot, Snot is an open source, highly configurable and portable host based on network based IDS. Snot is referred to as a lightweight IDS. Snot can perform real time packet capture, protocol analysis and content searching and matching. Snot can detect a variety of attacks and probes based on a set of rules configured by a system administrator. The SNOT implementation can be configured as a passive sensor which monitors traffic but is not the main transmission path of the traffic or inline sensor. In the later case, SNOT can perform intrusion detection as well as intrusion prevention. A SNOT Installation consists of four logical components as shown in this figure. That is the packet decoder. It efficiently processes each cap captured packet to identify and isolate protocol headers at the data link, network, transport and application layers. The detection engine does actual work of intrusion detection, analyzing each packet using rules defined for this configuration of SNOT by the security administrator. The logger of each packet that matches a rule if specified. The security administrator can then use the log file for later analysis. Alerter can be sent for each detected packet to a file a Unix socket or a database. SNOT uses a simple flexible rule definition language that generates the rules used by detection engine. Although the rules are simple and straightforward to write, they are powerful enough to detect a wide variety of hostile or suspicious traffic. Each rule consists of a fixed header and zero or more options. The header includes action, protocol, source IP address, source port, direction, destination IP, destination port. Following the rule header may be one or more rule options. 
each option consists of an option keyword which defines the option followed by arguments which specify the details of the option the example shown of a snort rule checks detects a type of attack at the tcp level known as a senfen attack it has specified source and destination networks and checks if the sen and the fen bits are set ignoring reserved bit 1 and reserved bit 2 in the flags octet the reference option refers to an external definition of this attack which is of type attempted recon various types of open source uh, ids tools are mentioned on this slide please go through these tools and present it as a project case study after 2 weeks a review on progress will be conducted in the next class as well let's summarize today's lecture we have uh, briefly gone through that what are what are intruders and what are their behaviors then we have uh, also gone through the ids terminology types and requirements we discussed ids analysis approaches uh, we have already explained uh, different uh, host based ids's then we have tried to understand the use of network ids distributed ids and honey pots finally we discussed snort and listed few open source uh, ids tools this comes to the end of this lecture these are the assignments which are to be completed please go through the review questions 8.1 to 8.22 and uh, submit uh, answer sheets during the next class uh, also carry out the literature review of the ids related papers uh, latest review papers may be referred present two good papers as two groups in a in a webinar uh, or the second webinar of this year then uh, uh, there is a, a research project that is use and experience the open source ids tools as discussed on slide uh, 50 or other available online then uh, you can have you will have to give a group presentation and demo after 2 weeks also include the course tools available as per your experience and carry out comparative analysis uh the other assignment is related to the uh, webinar uh for the year the first webinar for the year 2020 i have scheduled it on 13th may 20 and uh, prepare it as per this slide thank you very much for the patient uh, hearing and uh, you can shoot your questions now or you may send your queries and uh, your uh, assignments on these uh, email addresses you may contact me on these phone numbers if uh, there is an emergency